board voted six to one to, to reject that project that's next to my home, the uh, Brookfield development. They didn't want it at all. This town board voted for it, Not for all. the rezoning. Not all of them, but the present town board, who are on the town board, voted to rezone that land. 95 patio homes, they call, are going on that property. It's not finished, it's a Royal Merling pro uh, project. And it, it, it's just, you have to keep on top of this. It just, they can vote tonight if they wanted to to vote this down, and, and they really should. R3 zoning on that, from what I understand, and I've fought this, and R3 zoning is any, can be a three-story building, no more than 35 feet high in cluster housing. If that's a single family development, why isn't that R1 or R2? And if Mr. Emerling wants to rezone that land, have him rezone it R1 and put some single family homes in there. It's been done in Orchard, at the Orchard Park interchange. It's been done um, right along 219. And, and homes are being built. You can see the homes along at the uh, Orchard Park interchange. But in R3 zoning, that, that's an appeasement, I think, because then under an R3 zoning, you can put apartment buildings, just like he's doing there. So just be aware, just with the planning board, just because the planning board voted that down, it's up to these guys. It'll only take, well now it'll take four of them at least, to pass that zoning. But it's up to these guys and they can vote it down today. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Diane Washington and we purchased, my husband and I purchased the house on South Avenue Road, uh, 7093 South Avenue Road. Uh, Ten years ago, it was a beautiful house, and we have a beautiful view. Uh, the people before us called with Sunset Ridge. If they build this property where they want to build it, it will no longer be Sunset Ridge. I will not be looking at the sun set. I will be looking at a, uh, a hotel and well, different units down there. Um, I personally, we personally moved here because it was a nice town. That's the way I want to keep it. I don't want to have to move again. I'm too old to um, I, I love it, the town of North Boston. People are very friendly. And all I want to know is, would any of the board members want this in their back? No. Butternut Road, which is off Back Creek. So I spend a lot of time trying to get past 219 and past Tim Hortons without getting hit. Um, I, I, the first thing I thought when I saw this plan was you're going to have several hundred people, when you talk about all these homes, apartment buildings, hotels, businesses, you're going to have several hundred people on a one narrow entrance exit <laughs> road that dumps out at Tim Hortons. I thought, okay, so we have a little accident there. There's not one emergency vehicle, not one school bus, not one fire truck, not one ambulance that's gonna get in to those several hundred people or get out. Already I'm a little bit concerned about traffic and I don't live in Meadow Lake, but I think the traffic situation is critical. The other issue I have is I don't mean to sound too skeptical of our illustrious board, but I see Brookfield that looks like refugee housing. Yeah. We have covenants. We have covenants. You can read them right on your internet that say structures that are built, particularly businesses, should be reasonably attractive. We have the dollar store, yeah. a cinder block bunker. <laughs> it's, it's a mess. It's an ugly, uh, try that in East Aurora. Try that in East Aurora. Try, try Brookfield in East Aurora. Okay, why do we have this? I don't mean to be cynical. <laughs> but I, I have severe doubts about the concerns of our town board for us. Maybe we need to 
replace the town board. Yeah. 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 If anyone else wants to speak, please come up and line up here at the microphone. Thank you. Good evening. Five, six, four, five, Meadow Drive. I moved here 31 years ago from downtown East Packers. When I first moved in, there were great stakes in my backyard. And I asked the guy who was buying the house for what they were for. And they said, well, they have a problem with drainage on the north side. They want to bring the water out to run it down behind the house. Unfortunately, the town couldn't make water run uphill, so they decided to bring it down Meadow Drive. But they only brought the new pipe down about four houses were tied in with the existing drainage, which was half the size of the new pipes. So the first time it rained hard, the water is shooting out of the drainage tanks. Recently, Erie County Highway Department has been doing their utmost to increase the drainage flow under Abbott Road so that more water can get down the Meadow Drive. They were up there today hydromacking culverts to make sure that the water comes down off of the Herman Hill Road. It doesn't wash out Abbott Road and it dumps back into our backyards. My back, my stream in my backyard used to be maybe run a foot deep. After the first flood we had when the 219 washed out, they got on National Grid's case to put culverts underneath the transmission right away. Now my ditch in my backyard runs at full capacity every time it rains hard. Two years ago during the fair, when we got the downpour, I had no backyard, no front yard, no road. It's all underwater, and some of it's coming in my basement. We're going to pave how many acres of land? And nobody maintains that ditch on the north side but the homeowners. Where that water, I got three rivulets for streamlets that have started rushing into this ditch from this open land that they're going to develop. That was never there before. And I can't wait till they pave, if they pave all this over, where's that going to go besides in the rest of our basements? Thank you. Hello, I'm Sean Green. I live on Cloverfield Drive, which is about three miles from that site. And I just want to say that I'm for the rezoning. The simple fact is it is zoned commercial right now. Do you want a truck stop in there with 20 tractor trailers sitting there idling during the winter all night, all the fumes, anymore. everything. We would rather have a backyard that maybe you would have even friendlier neighbors behind you on Metal Drive. Maybe the people that moved in there are going to be friendlier than the ones that are living next door to you. And why should we stop people from coming out here and enjoying Boston? When you came out here and bought your house, that's what you wanted to do, didn't you? Why are you going to just shut the door now and lock the gate? Yeah. As far as the farming goes, farming's being obsolete with all this state of art. It's like your telephone. Oh, no. I'm not obsolete. I think the point of there are 38 uh, houses for sale, and no, the point, the point is, is the rezoning, and all you people have gotten off on tons of tangents. How much money are you going to make? It doesn't matter. You it have the money. Matter. Matter. You, know you know what Mr. Emily has done in this town? You know what Mr. Emily has done in this town? Between all the donation money? What about the businesses that are starving? You don't think more people that come here? The people that live in the hotel, they're here for one night to spend a few dollars, probably at the local restaurants, and then move on. You're not staying there for a month or a year or 40 years. That's all going to get addressed down the road. You're, you're addressing that stuff when they said not to. That isn't up to me. That's up to the state or whoever gives them the permit to do what they're going to do. That's not up to you either. No, you can go and voice your opinion when they said we're going to be talking about traffic study. I don't want to say what you have to say. If you want to sit and talk to them, there's other people behind you that want to sit and talk to you. I was not saying 
I would definitely probably entertain it, for sure. Why wouldn't you want another house in your backyard? I don't want to It was all right when I that house want, was empty. I don't want 12 acres of buildings in my backyard. Yes. And those are, those are people that can't afford a house. What? When you first got married or started out, where did you live? We're getting on a personal Sean, thing here, so yeah. let me know. Make some more money on it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's on four. The town is staggered. It needs some development. Some of the, the commercial restaurants and businesses are starting. I wasn't here. I don't care. I didn't that's right. And when I found my lot, you, know, you, you, you parked up on Meadow Drive, me in so much traffic. Why don't you look and see what the zoning was behind you? The businesses are not stopping. And I'm for it, and I hope that the board votes for it. That's a whole page. That's a whole page. Hello, my name is Diana Weiss, and I live on Meadow. And I've been so pleased to see everybody here because I'm the one that wrote the letters to the editor. Put it in the screen. <laughs> and I because this is not just a metal drive issue, this is a whole town issue. And the problem is 96 apartment units in the town of Boston in one spot. It makes no sense. Why? Why? In our town? Why? My other thought was, since we are so against this, or for it, why can't we bring this up to a referendum vote in November? My name is Jessica Hornberger. I live at 7161 South Abbott, so I'm a friend of Meadow Lane. And I had to step up here. <laughs> we cannot be cowed. We cannot be threatened. We cannot be forced to think that this is a good idea because this is how they're going to make money. They're not going to make money on it as a commercial property because what are you going to put there? Don't threaten us with a truck stop. Don't threaten us at all. You are our representative. Right. Yeah. I bought a house here nine years ago. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to sell my house. You owe it to the people who will stay to keep this town why we moved here. Yeah. Hi, my name is Jennifer Deathorn. I live at 7743 Boston State Road. Uh, my maiden name is Rommel. Uh, yes, I'm the youngest of the Rommel clan. I'm sure that you see all the cars in our driveway um, and enjoy honking as you go by when my father's working on them. Um, I was a resident the, of Boston the moment I was born. Um, I don't know if you know, but the EMT squad had to deliver me at my house. So thank you very much to the Boston EMT squad and Pat Ware, who my middle name is after as well. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to go to college, right? I, w I was able to afford that opportunity to go and further my education and step outside of my life in Boston, right? After going to Niagara University up, you know, in the North Towns area um, of Buffalo, I decided, you know, let's expand my knowledge and go somewhere else, and I went to graduate school in Pittsburgh. Stayed in Pittsburgh for about two years, and these past three years I've lived in Beverly, Massachusetts, which is right outside of Boston, Massachusetts. My big joke was I moved from Boston to Boston, and nobody really understood why. So I just moved back in June. Um, I came back home to be with my parents and to be back in this community. The town of Beverly, Massachusetts, I would say would be you know, very similar to what this town is looking like now. Um, there was so much going on, so much trying to build up, so many apartment complexes coming in that didn't fit with the town, didn't fit with the picturesque campus of that town didn't fit with the town's people that grew up there, were born, bred, and raised, and wanted to continue to born, breed, and raise their own, their own children in that similar environment. I ask you, what has Mr. Em Emmerling ever done for you? What has Mr. Emmerling ever done for me? I can't say much. I think he needs to think about that. He really needs to look at what these people are here, what we want. And I'm sorry, yeah, there are some people that are going on, moving on from this. Yes, you were, you were born here, sure. 
you want to go experiencing that somewhere else, absolutely go for it. But I know me and a lot of my friends, we're coming on back. We want to come back. We want to come back to this community. Keep it this way for us. Find me a Walmart anywhere in the world that has 60 feet of frontage. Anywhere. <laughs> or a truck stop. Or any other large commercial property. 60 feet of frontage. That's what they have. That, that's, that's what right. that's what Everling is working with here. No, they sell off the property. I own it. It's my mother owns it. I'm, we're not selling it. It's, my property. it's our property. We're not selling it. And I'm going to be around for 40 more years. <laughs> I just think. Is there anyone else? Is this going to be the last speaker? Anybody else want to line up? Okay, come on up. You got some place to go? Yeah. We got all night. You got all night. <laughs> I'm Joanne Rummel, and I have to get this off of my chest. I am really sorry. I live at 7743 Boston State Road. My family has owned this property that we live on for more than 58 years. It seems to me that this board, or some of this board, are trying to change the dynamic of this town. Through things that have happened in this town in the past four years, they're pitting neighbor against neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. And they're doing it constantly. I'm here personally to show that I don't want this town changed. And I don't want the backdoor approvals and the backdoor agreements being made by this tech board. Good evening. You thought you were going to get away, didn't you? <laughs> I would just like to observe that there is a proposal by Mr. Emerling. Okay? That's what we should be concerned about. We should not be concerned about some other proposal that might be worse or could be really bad. Right. We'll handle that one right. when it comes. Yeah. Thank you. things that are a little bit early in the process, as has been stated previously, we're here to discuss or hear comments about the rezoning. Uh, but a few of the technical matters that have come up, I think we should address if it helps to alleviate any concerns. The one that I would like to talk about is stormwater drainage, and I'll just talk about it for a minute. Uh, should this project move forward? Um, we are obligated, and the town is obligated, to ensure that any stormwater management system that is uh, constructed is in full and total compliance with the latest state uh, stormwater regulations, which are quite stringent. Um, two, two components to it. One is the volume of water, and we would be obligated, again, to restrict the flow from the site to a point where it does not exceed the rate at which the water leaves the site today. That's number one. Number two, stormwater quality. We've heard some issues about stormwater quality. Uh, we, we need to make sure that we review and assess for every project that we do. There's 13 green infrastructure measures that we have to assess to determine whether we can employ them into the project to ensure that we have um, as clean of water as reasonably possible into the site. And uh, that will be my job, that would be my job should we reach that point to ensure that that happens. And it would be the town engineer's job to ensure that we have complied with that. That's the only thing I wanted to mention. Who pays for that? We do. No one pays dollars. for that, Mr. Emerly or the town of Boston? Um, the stormwater management system would be totally paid for by the developer. There, there would be no cost whatsoever. To Who maintains it? it? 
Again, that would more than likely be I mean, something. Not more than likely. Who maintains it? We're way early in happy be having this kind of conversation. Well, it's too early to be talking about that, but it would be. Well, my million dollar project. You don't have a project plan yet? <laughs> We're just talking about the rezoning. We don't know how to rezone unless we know all the facts. All right, the night, guys, it's been a long hearing. We'll be very, very brief. First of all, um, I do appreciate the fact that everyone in this room has a lot of passion for the town of Boston. Deserve a lot of credit for that, so I do want to acknowledge that. I also want to acknowledge um, everyone's been very polite, so we, we appreciate that as well. The only thing we can ask you to consider as a town and as residents that live near the site is again the existing zoning today, which is C1, versus what we're proposing, and specifically what we're proposing if you live on the north side of Meadow Drive. I do want to note that neither myself, Mike, or any other member of the project team has at any time said. It's going to be a Walmart, it's going to be a super center, it's going to be prostitutes. We're, we're not taking that position. We're taking the position, though, that it is privately owned vacant land. It will be developed. If the rezoning gets denied, would it be, will it be developed tomorrow? No, not necessarily, but it will be developed. So we would ask you to consider, from a long-range perspective, which use would you prefer to have? If there is a need to refine the plan further based on input we've received tonight, we're willing to consider that. And we've actually heard some very useful input that I think we could take into consideration. I also want to recognize the gentleman who lives on the property on Boston Road who said his property is going to stay a single family home. I respect that. He owns it. He most likely will own that for many decades to come. So that's that's certainly his choice. So I guess that's all I would ask is, you know, think about it. Think about what the zoning is there today. Look at the zoning code. Look what's allowed by C1. And again, that zoning is there today. We didn't propose it. We didn't advance it. It was there when we bought the property. So look at that, compare it to what we're proposing, and then hopefully um, express your informed consent and informed opinion. Again, we appreciate everyone who's here. It's quarter of 10, so we'll wrap it up. I don't know if there's a question. Yes, sir. Okay, let me see. Yes, sir. I would just like to say, I'm hoping you'd take the back of the message Yeah, yeah, so I, I, I want to repeat the I want to I want to repeat the statement. And don't let me put words in your mouth. The statement was I'm asking the project sponsor and the project sponsor team to be cognizant of the appreciation of the residents of the quality of life in the town of Austin. I think that's what it says. I have a question. Can somebody please tell me what is the current for a building lot? What is it um, for R1, R2? Is it five acre lot? And what is the frontage? If you had, those are questions that can be addressed right well, now. No, this is a zoning issue. The, the frontage of the site is 60 feet. Okay, what I'm saying is, I mean, if, this, if everybody's concerned, I mean, I'm going to be double damaged. Concerned? Five acre? The, if you want to resolve, take this back down with Okay. Take your property, five acre lot, you can put maybe six, what is it, six, seven houses on there. We can't stop development. I know that for a fact. You make single family home with enough drainage, no parking lot, no nothing, maybe two farms, maybe two two houses that have a big burn. But are you kidding me with 12 buildings? Are you kidding me, Sean? Really? So we're asking you to consider. There's what? no consideration. Just say no. no. I was on the ZBA when you slammed. That, and, and, and I voted against it. No. You're getting off on a tangent. Well, no, I'm sorry. Does anyone have a question for the developer? There's a question. There's a question. I have a question. My question is I'm a little concerned with either or. Because there's nothing in here <coughs> okay. to suggest that this is. It's either this or something. Why is that a bigger stuff than this? Yeah, get rid of the damn apartments. In other words, yes, apartments, but more homes, bigger spaces. I don't think it has to be this or No, I, I, I agree. I, I just want to remind everyone that zoning today is C1. It's C1. What, what, is your, what are the target rents? 
the, the target rent, generally speaking, and again, you set this when you get the approvals, when you're ready to open. General, what would the target rent levels be for the apartments? Generally speaking, again, this is a generalization, single, one bedroom would probably be approximately $800 and up. In two bedrooms, you would probably get close to about $1,000. No, and I, do, I, do, I want to know because there is a misconception out there. Everyone, please, can I finish the statement? This is not subsidized housing. This is not low-income housing. This is not HUD voucher housing. It's not a... It's... Okay, we're going to take one more question here in the back, sir. Just a quick question, because I, I, I look at both sides of this. There's a few that got up and said, geez, residential might not be bad. It's not my backyard, so, you know, I don't know if I'd want anything back there right now, if I lived there. But this is a question about zoning, you're saying. Okay. And Roy has it zoned, or we as a town have it zoned C1 right now. I don't know what goes in C1, what can go in C1, and I'm sure, I'm not sure even if a Walmart could, I don't know. But would Roy be interested in going to R1 for the entire parcel? Yeah. No, this is Okay, then, 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 then now you know what's happening here. He's saying I'm going to give up C1, but I'm going to get an R2 over there or whatever, or C something, R3. C2, so I can get a hotel. Right. That's really what should be talked about tonight, because it is C1 right now. Right. And so we're really, really not giving up much by saying C1. So, so that was the question. Or he wouldn't be willing to do that. No, we wouldn't make enough money. I'm being told. Okay, we're not going to entertain any questions. We're the people. 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 We're I'm, you know, you want to come in the door and sit there and have a good time. But have you also said we're going to ask questions? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. You're going to say how many questions? Yeah. Well, back there, Morris. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that everybody does still have additional questions. Myself, the other supervisors, and the, the supervisor and the other councilmen are willing to stay after to speak with you, but we do have other legal matters that we have to take care of. If you want to walk away at this point, that is your right. But we have the public hearing has been closed. We have two applications for the use of facility that still need to be addressed because we were not able to get to them prior to this public hearing. So, before we can get out of here, uh, we have a application for the use of facility for Dan and Jackie Endress, and for the Hamburg, Hamburg League Baseball. The date for Jackie and Dan was 8-5-2017. They are asking for use of the town park, the lion shelter, the bathroom facilities. They will be serving alcohol. They will be having a private party. They are not having a public special event. They, they have. Uh, I have been told that they have received uh, that we have received their insurance. Uh, I don't have it from me, so I would like to approve this only with a caveat that we all, as board members, get to see the insurance proof of insurance first. I have made a motion. There is a motion on the table to approve the use of facility for Dan and Jackie Endress. Second motion. Yes. For the Hamburg League Baseball, the date requested is 7-16 at 3 p.m. for baseball. They are asking for the North Boston Stadium. They are not serving alcohol. They are not having a private party. It is not a public special event. I do have an insurance of liability, a certificate of liability insurance in front of me for that particular group. I would like to make a motion that we approve the use of facility for the Hamburg Legion Baseball. We have a second. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Yes. Yes.